everyone, so today I'm going to show you how I do a really easy highlight and contour routine. I'm going to take you through my entire makeup or face makeup routine in a way where I sort of like blend in those techniques into my everyday routine. So this is a way where you don't have to feel like, okay, I want to highlight and contour, but I'm going to have to go out and buy these products and I have to follow those weird like maps and I'm going to have to do that and then that's going to take a while and then I'm going to have to do this and that. it's going to be like, you know, at least two more products that I add in. Well, what I do is I actually use products from my existing routine. I make them sort of do double, so I'm not layering a million things on my face. I do it in a way that makes sense for me. And it's a really easy thing to do, so you don't have to be intimidated by highlighting and contouring, because I know it can be scary, especially when <laughs> you see those diagrams and it looks like really, really scary dark products, really scary light products, so you really don't have to do all that. So I'm going to start the tutorial in just a sec, but quickly highlighting and contouring um, is just essentially a way to keep your face from looking like flat. It gives it some dimension. Um, when you contour, you add darker colors to like areas of the face that you want to recede or maybe um, not hide, but... But yeah, recede a bit. It can slim your face, it can narrow, it can short, it can do anything and that's what's so neat about makeup. And then highlighting does not have to be frosted shades. I think that's everyone's biggest mistake. They assume highlight means you have to use a shimmery product and that's not the case. Um, that just means that you're trying to like accentuate high planes of your face, um, not even high planes of your face. Sometimes to accentuate different areas, you can add the lighter product and it will sort of make it pop a little more. That being said, it sounds like a scary scientific complicated thing, but it's really not. When I do my makeup, I do it every day. I work it into my routine. It doesn't have to be intimidating. But on the daily, you can get a natural result. You can get those same results, the same sort of effects um, result-wise and use things that you probably already have. Okay, so let's get started. Um, this is not a foundation tutorial, so I really sped qu quickly through that at the beginning, but I did think that was part of it, so, um, so I did sort of mention and show the foundation a bit. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope this is helpful, and if you wanna see how I did it, then keep watching. So I do my foundation first. This is not a foundation tutorial, so I'm just gonna kinda speed through quickly. I prefer to use one that has good coverage so that I can actually use less. I always start in the center of my face where there's the most uh, discoloration and stuff and then I work out. And it's always a good tip anyways. Never start like this because then you'll, you know, then you're blending inward and then it's like, it's weird. For my foundation, I use my Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus and the F80 by Sigma. To quickly conceal any redness. Mine's mostly around my nose and then just like breakouts and stuff. For my concealer, I just use my MAC Studio Finish and the E15 brush. I love this for concealer. So your skin's perfected, but you're left with a very flat appearance. Not flat as in matte. The finish of this foundation is more like a matte natural finish. It's not super like chalky or, or done looking. Um, but you just have no dimension to your face. So I like to add the finish that I like, the glow, the dimension with the products that are to come. So next I do my under eye concealer and this is where the products that sort of do double start to come in. I use this MAC Prep and Prime and Radiant Rose and these come in a lot of different colors. But what I do is I start on my under eye. It's very bright, it's a very pink shade. I also like this Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser in the brightening shade. You can use a shade that is more natural, like skin toned. Um, but for me, I just, I find that this works. And you'll be surprised that a light colored, like brightening product like this will actually conceal a lot of those under eye um, circles. If you have very, very bad circles, and mine are pretty shadowy, not like severe, then you may want to use, um, you can even mix like a concealer in at this point. Um, I used to really love the MAC Select Moisture Cover. I really need to get some more of that or the Studio Moisture Cover. That was always really good, but I've just been really loving this Maybelline lately. And you can get these in skin tone shades. So, at this point, I use a product like this. You can even use a lighter foundation. Um, I used to use those little MAC tubes five, six years ago when I started the channel. The Select Cover Up or uh, select cover, not sure what those are called. Those co come in a wide variety of shades. So if you have darker skin tone or whatever, you may want to go for something like that and then select a couple shades lighter than your skin. All right, so do that and then do just a little bit down the center of my nose. Take an F86 brush and it's, to me, this is almost gen more gentle than my finger. This is just kind of like velvet. It almost like just like airbrushes the finish and it kind of pulls it down on its own because of the shape. 
And like always, that concealer sort of comes down just slightly as well. So you can see that really brighten things up. Do the other side. And then on this little inner corner, you can kind of just sort of with your finger. And then down the center of my nose, that's very small. So I just sort of blend that. This stuff is great. You can put it anywhere. Like I like to put just a little bit on my lips sometime. So you see what I mean by that product doing double. It kind of did everything. It highlighted it. You can add so much more if you want. Um, that's just like an everyday thing. But when you do your... Um, when you're doing your concealer, you can even sort of add a little bit to that area. Uh, back in the day when I used my Emphasize a ton by MAC, I always did that and I would always stamp a little bit right there. It really does make a difference. So, that product's light enough. It's not like a really moisturizing under eye concealer, but it's moisturizing enough. It's just the perfect product. You can use it anywhere. With setting powder, you need to be careful. I don't like to use products anymore that are like toned to my skin tone. I like to use ones that are a bit more brightening. It just gives a better effect. I am loving this uh, translucent light reflecting setting powder by NARS. And I use a brush like this. This is an F25. This is similar to the ambient lighting powders, but I find that it, um, it it applies just a sheer, but I feel like this really kind of gives me more of a glow rather than the diffused light shade, if you're familiar um, with me talking about using those. So all I do with this, and this is like the tiniest amount of powder, don't use a lot of setting powder, put a little right there, areas where I would get shiny, areas where I've concealed, and then whatever's left on the brush, just dust it over, and there's really hardly anything left on the brush. Just a little bit on my forehead. Don't go crazy with setting powder. And I could have done that with my Diffused Light by Hourglass. Uh, that looks like this. I've just been going back and forth lately, and I do find that the NARS, this one's a bit more sheer, and it gives a little bit more of like a glow, like a lit within glow. To make things super easy, to set your under eye concealer, you can even use this. I've used this before and it works great. But there are things that I use a little more often and I just wanted to mention that. I've been using this Ethereal Light. It's one of the ambient lighting powders. And this is this just the perfect brush. It's the um, F35 by Sigma. And I just sort of apply that right over and then right down where I applied just a little more. I like to take a little bit on my finger too just to get a lot and then just right down the center of my nose and then blend. And you can also take um, a product like this. This is before my ambient lighting powders. This is what I swore by and I still reach for this every now and then. It's the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. It's a loose product so you have to be a little ca more careful with it. But um, same brush, you just apply it in the same exact way that I just showed. So we're at a good point. We've got to do our contour, but we're already getting like some of that natural dimension without looking like you've used like a white under eye concealer, like you don't know what you're doing. Um, it just looks natural and, and nice. I love it. With contour, again, I'm keeping this true to what I like to do with my makeup. So this is just my must-have. It's a number two powder contour by Chanel. Some people say this is discontinued because they can't find it everywhere, but I did... Um, link to, I believe it's either Bloomingdale's or, I forgot where it is. But anyways, one place online I found this and they still have it. Um, a really great brush for bronzer, for contour. And I just find that this Too Faced Sun Bunny is super natural looking. I also like the NARS Laguna. So I kind of go back and forth. It has two shades, but I sort of go back and forth and I start right there under my um, cheekbone. You kind of see that creates a scary line. But... That's what I love about this brush. It's fluffy enough to where you can really get a nice, like, bronzed effect, but it's um, sort of chiseled enough at the end where you can get a more precise application. So the big tip that I have with bronzer is not to go too far in. You really don't want to extend it any more than probably the colored part of your eye, probably like where the outer part is. You really just want that to be your guide because if it gets too far in, it's just not going to look right. So we'll blend over that a little more in a moment. I'll do the other side. While I do this, I'll mention you can also use a product like those MAC Sculpting Powders. I used to use the Bone Beige years ago, and that is a really good one. Um, it's not as quite, not as warm as a bronzer. I just feel like this one looks natural. Not every bronzer is going to work. Um, you want one that's not too orange. You want one that has a little bit of a warmth to it. I find that the ones that are too cool almost just um, make me look a little dead sometimes. So I, I do like to use a bronzer. But just play around and get the one that looks looks good for you but this is just easy and then I get a little bit more on the brush and I like to extend it up my temple 
along my hairline. That's going to sort of frame your face. So this provides a good shadow and it's flattering sort of frames your face and like if you have a larger forehead this does help my forehead's pretty my forehead's relatively small but this is just really to me um, always the most flattering step and when you ever get a natural tan or you get a little bit of sun it always comes in right there anyways okay my hair's funky I know I'm gonna take this um, f64 by Sigma and take the lightest shade and then right down the center or the the center like sides of my nose now you don't have to do this I think it is a little bit flattering I don't do this all the time put just a little bit on the tip but it sort of um, just makes your nose look a little straighter and makes it um just looks a little f more flattering and can slim it a little bit it's just fun what you can do with the colors so now you can see we're getting a lot of dimension just make sure you've blended well it really doesn't take that long to do this I'm just trying to like reiterate the blending and to show you um, what I like to do you can, you can even take this same brush. You would just really have to blend a lot. Um, but not really. I mean, I think that would totally work. But if you want even more of a def defined like cheekbone, after you do that whole blending first step, take the dark shade on a smaller brush. This is an F05. And um, right there. Don't take it up like you would the bronzer. But you can just sort of um, shape the edge of your cheekbone like that. This is just the best brush for contour and I've used these type of brushes like this for years and really nothing comes close if you're gonna really contour your face. These work for cream products too, although if you're going to use a cream product, I would say a brush like this, the F84, is really great for that too. Oh, I scratched my neck. That's attractive. So you can see it's flattering. It's not too much. It's natural. You've got like a good dimension going. And sometimes I'll actually skip blush, but I'm gonna add it today to show you for the video and lately I've just been using the NARS Orgasm so I'm gonna stick true to that and show you that and I'm gonna use the F40 brush you can even dab off a little bit if you don't want it to be too intense sometimes I do that because you've already got the bronzer but where I like to apply the blush you don't want it to just become some big old mess there is kind of a method to it you don't want to overlap the light color you don't want to go in too far um, so what I like to do is just apply it right there sort of on the apple the outer apple I don't like to go in too far with my blush and you really need the tiniest amount because you've already got the bronzer, so you're not trying to really build up color. You just warm it up a bit. So that kind of brightened up the bronzer a bit, kept it from looking too brown, but I do like the look of the bronzer on its own, too. Like I said, highlighter I think is best when it's not shimmery. I can't even take my hair seriously right now. Um, when it's not shimmery. So when I do add a product for a bit of sparkle, I'm not really highlighting because I feel like I've already done that. But sometimes I want to add just a bit of a sheen for the finish. So I'm going to take this F35 brush, the Luminous Light. This gives a little more of a, um, not intense finish, but it does put down a little more than, say, like a regular duo fiber brush. You can already see, like, crazy, so pretty. Um, and then I like to sort of take it up like that. So just kind of create a C and do that on both sides. I like to take the fluffy end of that bronzer brush and just sort of shouldn't have a lot of product on it, really any product at all, but just make sure that it doesn't look like a stripe. So that's it for everything. I mean, it looks really natural and gives you some dimension. Um, on the other hand, though, I will say it is flattering to add a bit to your eyes here and there. While that's not like the face face, um, and I've already done my eyes, I will show you. Um, this is similar to the Benefit Eye Bright that I really, really love as well, but this one is a little less I mean, it's still pink, but it's not like pink. This one I just think is more natural. It blends out better. It's um, the Highlighting Pencil by Sigma. No matter what type of eye look you've done, you can just apply a tad bit of that and sort of lightly blend. And it really just sort of like lifts this area. It gives it some more dimension. Sort of like frames your eye makeup a little better. It sort of makes everything stand out a little more. And then you can even put just a little bit right there in that little pocket and blend with your finger. So that's it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Tie in these tips to your normal routine. Rethink some of your actual products. Make them do double. And you'll end up with a better result, I think. It's just easy to tie in these techniques into your normal routine um, for a much better effect, I think. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Have a fabulous week, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.